but you also the man himself here, what cancel? The legend is here, inshallah, his new home and... Imagine the reward of helping a new revert who's come to Islam to go Umrah for the very first time. Do you know how strong it will keep them in their faith in Islam, brothers and sisters? You can be a part of that sponsorship, brothers and sisters, by giving just like many people have £2, £5 or £10. Please, please take this opportunity and get the reward of every single ibadah they do there, inshallah. Sometimes in life, brothers and sisters, we can't really see the true intentions of an individual. Are they genuine or are they not? But as time goes, we see what they're really about. Just like this. Oh, that's much better. I can see more clearly your face. Brothers and sisters, Andrew Tate released, well, his friend released a video of him in Dubai and he said something along the lines of, Inshallah, he's come to his true home or something along those lines. And we see him in the masjid praying. Here's the clips. Let's watch that. And let's learn five key lessons of how Muslims should react, not on the short, uh, short-sighted, but on the long term, how we should react to Andrew Tate accepting Islam or not coming to Islam. Or is he just using Islam? Let's watch his videos first. I told you also, the man himself is here, what cancelled? The legend is here, inshallah, his new home, and we're going to bring you a very special show soon to all the people who supported him his whole way. Bro, thank you very much, man. Thank, thank you, brother. Glad to be here. Guys, what you saw there was Andrew Tate with his friend, Muslim friend, and he's in the masjid. Now, brothers and sisters, there's two things that you need to know. A person who believes Islam is true in his heart, but doesn't testify on the tongue, is known as a disbeliever. Because he knows it's the truth, but he doesn't testify on his tongue. Like Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle. A person who doesn't believe in his heart, but utters it on his tongue, is known as a munafiq. Somebody who is pretending to be a, it's like an imposter trying to be pretending to be a Muslim. The first thing that we need to learn is this one, sisters. If Andrew Tate does come to Islam or he's already become a Muslim, we hope so because it seems like he's praying and that could show the action. If the action is genuinely, you know, Iman is connected to the actions. If the action is purely that he believes this, then he's accepted Islam. Um, uh, however, obviously some scholars might say that he has to testify it. But the first thing we need to do is what? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nasr, أَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إذا جاء نصر الله والفت ورأيت الناس يدكلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when there comes Allah's help and the victory and you see people entering Allah's approved religion in multitudes then pronounce the purity and praise of your Lord and seek forgiveness from Him, surely He's ever relenting. The first thing we need to do is what? We should praise our Lord, alhamdulillah, that the true religion is being seen by people famous or not famous. Alhamdulillah, the first thing we need to do is praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, what, how should we react? If Andrew Tate comes to Islam, if he comes to Islam, brothers and sisters, we should not be like, oh, oh my God, he accepted Islam. Okay, yani you can be happy, we're not saying don't be happy, but don't tie Islam's success and Islam being true and your Iman to an individual coming to Islam or not. We understand, and it can be like, you know, like a bit tempting, like, oh my gosh, you know, he accepted Islam as well. It might, it's, it's good and it can be a sign of showing that, that it's the true religion. But on the long run, brothers and sisters, we shouldn't do that. Why? Because, and we should assume the best, of course, in Islam we are told to assume the best. But Umar ibn Khattab said, we used to judge people based on revelation. Revelation is stopped now, we judge from what's apparent. Behind me, you can see that there's colors changing. I don't know what color it is now, is it blue? It might turn to pink, it might turn to green, it might turn to red. The point is this, people go through different phases. People may have different intentions. We have to assume the best, which I'm going to come to later. But we cannot tie Islam's success based on individual. Because what if he, tomorrow, like, let, let's suppose he didn't accept Islam. Okay, let's suppose he did accept Islam. Let's suppose he accepts Islam and leaves Islam. So what? So what? We are happy if he comes for his own good, alhamdulillah, for his salvation. Alhamdulillah, we're happy for him, of course. Do we want anyone to go hellfire? Of course not. We're happy for that he's joined the family. However, if he decides to leave, what we're going to do? Cry about it? Have doubts about Islam? Our iman's going to go down? No. That's why tie yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not individuals. Okay, number three. Some people are coming and saying, you know what? He's got some alter, uh, different motives. He's doing it for fame or clout. And this they're trying to get Muslim audience, etc. Look, these are valid concerns. We understand. It can be the possibility. 
But we have evidence from the Quran and this, we have evidence from the Sunnah that a man came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said I was in the battlefield fighting a, a enemy of Islam. Yes, okay, in the battlefield and I was about to strike him, like kill him and he said I saved Islam. But he was, I still struck him because I knew he was saying that uh, because he just wanted to save his life. And the Prophet Sallam got so angry. He said, did you open his heart and did you see his intentions? Like, he rebuked the companion. How could you say that? How could you make these assumptions and based on what? Nothing. And you took his life. Brothers and sisters, if Andrew Tate has accepted Islam, then you are going to be slandering him. We don't, we look, we, if he seems like he's been positive towards Islam, etc. You know, like before, there's stuff that his son is said, which is wrong. There's pros and cons to it. But we've seen him say very good stuff about Islam. So we need to assume the best until there is evidence. We can't just judge and be like, oh, if he does, oh, I told you guys. So no, it doesn't, Islam doesn't work like that. We judge. The Sharia calls for, for us, if he's accepted Islam, we look at the evidence to say that he's a believer, we'll do that. If the Sharia calls for us to rebuke him, we'll rebuke him. But the point is, we shouldn't go down this route of assuming the worst. And we have the evidence from the hadith. Number four, brothers and sisters, some people are coming and saying, oh, but he's still committing haram and this stuff, he's lying, he's not a Muslim. When has committing sins, minor or major, made one a disbeliever? I mean, this was the ideology of the Khawarij, you know? And I'm not saying, by the way, uh, let's be clear here, we know some people of absolute ignorance claiming an individual or people are Khawarij because they said something pertaining to that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is we don't have that belief. We shouldn't say that. We shouldn't say, oh, um, this person cannot accept Islam because he's committed sins. Aisha Anha has said, if Islam was to come with halal and haram, nobody would have come to Islam. What does that mean? That means, brothers and sisters, <coughs> when we're giving da'wah and Messiah, we always do it the wrong way round. We come to people, okay, now we're going to teach you what's haram. This is haram, 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 haram. La ilaha illallah. Is Islam just about haram and halal? When the person leaves Islam, what's he going to say? Yeah, I was a Muslim. What did you know? Oh yeah, I learned what's haram and what's halal. Is that it? Islam's foundations are tawheed. Islam is much more than haram and halal. Of course, it's connected to Tawheed. But the point is this. If we did our da'wah the right way in our Messiah, once you enter Iman and teach person the personal beauty of Tawheed and the ugly side of shirk, once Iman enters the heart, they will let go of haram themselves and they will embrace halal themselves. We do it the opposite way around. And this does makes Islam look as if it's just a robotic religion and there's just some protocols you need to follow. Islam is so much spiritual and deeper than that it's more than don't follow this guy and he's misguided and this that and this, this kind of pathetic things that make people run away from islam so islam is much more deeper than that and that's my fourth point my last point brothers and sisters also i'm going to touch upon Muhammad Jab is inshallah having an interview with andrew tate it's very soon on his channel we're going to find out has he already become a muslim would he accept islam then we don't know but the point is brothers and sisters the point is this that we need to acknowledge and understand that if he comes to Islam, we are happy for him. And my last point is this. Just know that your heart, your innate disposition, we have something called the fitrah. That everything that you have, the money, the cars, the women, the houses, the holidays or whatever it may be, there is nothing that you can give the soul that could feed it. Except la ilaha illallah. Except the worship of God. Allah says in the Quran, indeed in his remembrance do hearts find peace. And if you forget his remembrance, you'll have a depressed life. Meaning what? Just as you give your stomach food, it eats it and it has nutrition. If you give it the wrong food, it vomits it out. The soul is exactly like that. If you give it anything other than its remembrance of its Lord and its gratitude to its Lord and its worship to its Lord, it will reject it. Money, cars, whatever it may be, and you know very well. Yes? Okay, I might, I'm not going to say I live the lifestyle like yours, maybe a little bit similar, not to that degree, but nothing I gave it made it happy. Until I freed my shackles from enslavement to society and the matrix you want to call it and enslave myself to the true creator who deserves my worship that is when I found my true freedom and brothers, my dear brother Andrew Tate inshallah if you accept Islam know that your hearts will only find peace your heart only in la ilaha illallah and his remembrance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's it brothers and sisters till next time hope you guys have benefited the video don't forget to watch from Muhammad Ijab and Andrew Tate's discussion and make dua for him inshallah if he's accepted Islam on the way to accept Islam or he doesn't accept Islam Alhamdulillah, we've done a bit. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.